Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the G, uh, GM, Eastern WF, GFS Ensembles and finally have a look at the UK Metal Office run as well. Now as you saw my video yesterday things are looking very dry if not warm for the next sort of five to seven days however as we head into early next week it is looking like um, we could be th getting things spiced up a little bit within the jet stream as you know at the moment we've got major hurricane Ida making landfall um, near New Orleans as we speak right now as a Category 4 hurricane. Now, I've released a video earlier, so do check that out on the specifications of this storm and its severe impacts. But for the UK, this storm is going to put a spanner in the works. Now, it's going to track up the northeast over the rest of this week, but as we head towards the next weekend, it's going to exit out of the United States. And if we do run through the latest GFS, I can show you um, what may happen as we see that. So, this week, generally just... Uh, got high pressure and control, maybe a bit of an easterly wind, so maybe some variable cloud mounts, especially in the east. But as we're to the end of this week, you can see this low pressure system exiting out of the United States. It's got a lot of hot air wrapped up within it, and that is X Hurricane Ida. Now, it will just become a general low pressure system, but because it's got some, some quite hot air and still a lot of energy, it is going to change the jet stream. And what we do start to see is this injection of hotter air northwards is going to give some big amplification to the jet stream. And what you see is we've got a cut-off low developing, high pressure building over Scandinavia, because of course the high pressure we have over the top of the UK at the moment doesn't really want to budge, because it's a blocking pattern of course. And what this low pressure does is it drives up hotter air northwards and um, into the UK, and we also develop this cut-off low, um, and it sort of just diverts the jet stream builds a very complex picture, um, too difficult to for me to really explain in a single video. Um, so yeah, it creates a really complex picture, and you can see high pressure to our north, low pressure to the south, and if you look at the upper air temperatures, as we go towards sort of day uh, day 10, you see there's actually some quite warm over the top of the UK, cut off low, um, and things could be turning um, quite unsettled with this cut off low, especially in the south, um, things looking generally warm, um, and as we head um, towards towards day ten, so in about day, uh, so in ten days' time, because of this big application of the jet stream, there's some very very hot air is going to be sp spilling up from the south. Now we don't know exactly where this hot air is going to go, but because of the application of this jet stream, it's going to head somewhere northwards. And this latest GFS run is going to clip the far south of the U uh, southeast of the United Kingdom, but we can have a cut off low. So this is a scenario where we could see some quite warm weather into the first week of September, but also quite unsettled, potentially with some thunderstorms returning, uh, or at least some very heavy rain. If we do zoom in to the um, sort of UK picture, you can see 17, 18 degree, even the 20 degree ice firm is into northern France, um, sort of it's creeping into the far southeast corner. We have a cut off low, if we look at the... Um, um, pressure charts just to our southwest and that will be spiraling in some thunderstorms and we'll have a look at the precipitation charts in a minute but it could be pretty severe this sort of conditions a lot of heat and energy being fueled into that low pressure system in the longer term we still have quite a big buckling in the jet stream because of all these tropical systems heading northwards so we do have uh, some more throughout this model run that hasn't haven't quite formed yet um or at least are not major hurricanes um and we just yeah it's going to bring some big buckling into the jet stream. You can see generally things are looking westerly, but as we head towards the end of this run, we'll see something very, very, very interesting happen. If we look at the pressure charts, we do see another tropical system heading up to the northeast coast of America, and that is firing hot air up towards, or at least warm air by this time, uh, stage, up towards Greenland. And as we see here, we're going to be building a classic northerly blast um, for the last uh, day of this latest GFS with a big blocking air of high pressure up towards Greenland and a straight northerly. Now, of course, it's the middle of September, so there's no real cold air there, but it will feel particularly chilly in the north of Scotland. This is all down to these tropical systems putting up energy into the Atlantic and creating this big ripple effect, um, being, bringing big amplification. It's going to bring a lot of uncertainty into the forecast. And you can see by this latest GFS run, one minute we have southerly winds with very hot air and potential for big thunderstorms. And then a good few days later, 
we're going into a northerly blast um, with some quite chilly air heading from the south, uh, coming in from the south, uh, from, from the north, sorry. So things looking very uncertain, but it could be putting in some very interesting weather over the next few weeks. We really need to stay tuned um, to see these computer models, see what's going to happen. If we do have a look at the latest from the GFS, we'll have a look at the precipitation rate and temperature just to give us an idea of what the sort of the southerly wind and then the northerly wind may produce. So as we head through, very dry this week, a few showers in the far southeast. But as we head towards the next weekend, that cutoff low um, heads in from the southwest and gets fueled by hot air in the southeast. We build in some big thunderstorms into the south, um, potentially um, bringing a lot of rain uh, into areas. And again, another system moving up from the south, potential for some big, big thunderstorms there. And as we head to right towards the end of the run, you see a northerly wind spreads in with cooler air coming in from the north. If we have a look at the upper, uh, the two meter temperatures. You can see, as we have that southeasterly wind, you can see temperatures getting up to the mid twenties in the east, and even further north, getting into the mid twenties as well, which is pretty warm. Because uh, considering we're getting into autumn now, into September, and those warm temperatures continue potentially twenty six degrees in London, um, and as we be head beyond that, head right to that northerly wind, you can see by midday on fourteenth of September. Only five degrees in northern Scotland and elsewhere, low teens, and in London, struggling around 15, 16 degrees. But of course, the cold air hasn't quite reached there yet. So it just shows you how variable this weather is going to be. And it all is to do with these Atlantic um, systems, um, these tropical systems, which is just pushing hot air up northwards, interacting with the jet stream and creating a lot of uh, uh, quite big ripple effects and bringing some big amplifications. And we have to keep an eye on it. Um, and really, the first thing we've got to keep an eye on is what's going to happen with Ida and the potential for dragging up some very hot air from the south. If we do have a look at the GM, see what that is showing at the moment. We've got, of course, high pressure at the top of the UK, nothing too significant. As we head through the end of this week, we see Ida coming out of the north -east, northeast of the United States, driving up hot air, um, spreading across the Atlantic. Atlantic. And you do see, we do develop that cutoff low around early next week. Now, on this latest uh, GM, that cutoff low gets pushed away by more energy out in the Atlantic. And that high pressure up towards Scandinavia doesn't quite hold. And it means the hot air doesn't quite travel as far northwards. Now, it still goes warm. Um, we're still getting the 10 degree, if not 15 degree ice firm through at times. And by the end of the run, we're pulling in a westerly wind that's going to be quite warm. Um, so it's still showing some warm and potentially thundery conditions at times, but not quite the perfect storm we're seeing with the GFS. We've got that hot air pushing into that low pressure system. So again, very warm potentially um, towards the first week of September at times. But again, there could be a lot of unsettled, stormy um, weather around with potentially thunderstorms, if not strong winds and heavy rain at times. If we do see one of these low pressure systems rapidly deepen. Uh, and again, you can't count that out, one of these tropical systems um, uh, sort of staying intact, uh, at least as a low pressure system, potentially giving us some stormy weather as well. So, yeah, it just shows you the uncertainty at this stage. And again, it's all because these tropical systems are putting a spanner in the works. And again, we just have to keep an eye on how it does develop. If we do have a look at the ECMWF, um, for the last, uh, uh, the last year, these uh, main models, you can see high pressure dominating over the next few days. And then as we head towards this weekend, we've got low pressure out in the Atlantic. You can see X Hurricane Ida coming out of the northeast pushing up hot air into the Atlantic. And you can see, we've got a similar pattern to the GFS, slightly different, as this low pressure is a little bit more developed, getting fueled by ex-hurricane Ida with this hot air coming into that system. And we do pull up southerly winds, so very hot air spreading into the far southeast, into northern France, and the potential for big thunderstorms. You can also see Ida is just to the west of the UK, with still some very strong winds potentially spreading in. And that's, again, where we could see um, some stormy weather with that, and even some thunderstorms, strong winds, and rain. You can see further west, we've got two tropical systems still there. Another tropical system heading out of America, and another quite deep uh, uh, tropical system, probably still a tropical storm, if not hurricane, heading out in the Atlantic, and that once again could spice up the weather um, at around day 10. So you can see why I've got a lot of uncertainty at this stage, but it does look like there's pretty decent confidence what's going to happen, at least um, with hurricane or ex-hurricane Ida, with it hitting the jet stream, potentially bringing up south or southwest easterly winds, with some warmer conditions coming in, potentially at times, but also low pressure is going to be involved, especially the south and the west, um, bringing in some unsettled conditions with the thunderstorm threat returning. 
If we do finally have a look at the GFS ensembles for London, you can see over the next week or so, temperature is going to be above average with that high pressure. A lot of dry weather, and we do see sunshine, temperatures get into the low 20s. At, as we head towards the 5th, 6th, 7th of September, the precipitation signal returns. We see that low pressure develop to our far south. Now, it is going to be shower activity, a lot of convection with it, with this, so storms, uh, thunderstorms developing. And that's why it's not particularly well forecasted on the ensembles right now sort of the microclimate condition we see pop-up storms develop it's not going to be particularly well modeled this far out you can see there's a lot of uncertainty with the upper air temperatures some including the gfs operation getting to 12 14 plus degrees at 800 phpa which is a good six seven eight degrees above average for this time of year um bringing and that's going to be fueling storms others have temperatures a little bit lower potentially for the atlantic breaking through and we're going to be seeing a little bit of a colder sector warmer sector because of course with these low pressure systems coming in off the Atlantic, they are, because they aren't tropical systems anymore, they are fueled by cooler air coming in from the north and warmer air coming in from the south, uh, spinning them up. So it's going to be colder sectors within these, within these low pressure systems. So that's probably what's happening on some of these cooler runs. And of course, in the longer term, we've got, of course, with the amplification of the jet stream, the potential for northerly winds. And you can see with the, that uh, GFS run right towards the end, going pretty chilly indeed, potentially in London, getting down to one degree at 850 HPA, which wouldn't be... Um, too uncommon um, in sort of December time. So just shows you how uh, much uncertainty and how mad these tropical s systems could create, uh, would, w w how mad the weather could turn with these tropical systems. Um, with the application of the jet stream, really anything can happen from southerly winds to northerly blasts. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. We do have some certainty with the 7 to 10 day forecast with that potential southeasterly um, warmer warmer air moving in with them thunderstorms but we can't say exactly what's going to happen with that we can't look at the exact details um, at this stage but it is looking like that may be coming off in about a week or so time if we have a look at the sea level pressure you can see that is starting to be well um, forecasted you can see high pressure at the moment but as we head towards 5th 6th of september we have that cut off low in the far southwest uh, bringing down the temperature now it is of course a weak low pressure system um, with only around a thousand to a thousand and five millibars, maybe a touch higher, which is low pressure, but it's not massively low pressure, um, and because it's not a massively deep system, um, but it's just going to be providing that spark within that hot, humid air for storms uh, and heavy showers to break out. So, yeah, we'll have to keep it really keep an eye on what happens with this. But this stage is looking more and more uh, likely that we're going to be seeing this southerly or southeasterly wind with some warmer air moving in. And we combine with unsettled conditions, and the only re and that recipe creates showers and thunderstorms, and potentially some hotter days here or there. With temperatures getting into the mid twenties, potentially where we do see some sunshine. So if we do finally wrap up with having a look at the UK Met Office forecast on their latest model. Generally, it looks pretty dry this week. We've got a few showers in the far, uh, far east, um, and we, as, we, as we've been saying over the last few days, they're going to be here to miss a few lighter showers with a bit of drizzle here or there throughout the next few days, especially in the east, but potentially coming a bit further inland at times where we do see some thicker cloud. And once again, it's difficult to forecast them, really, um, as they are going to be rare, really where we pick up that thicker cloud. Um, and that's, again, very difficult to forecast, um, as it all depends on sort of cloud heights, um, and at this stage, it does look like generally the east may have the higher chance of seeing some cloudy weather, whereas west looks better for sunshine and not seeing any of this drizzle. If we do have a look at the max temperatures at 1.5 metres, you can see this afternoon we saw 20 degrees in the west, a bit cooler, maybe 17, 18 degrees in the east. But for me, it was around 17, 18 degrees today. I didn't feel particularly chilly. Um, you may need a jumper, but it's not feeling that cold. I mean... Um, it's fairly pleasant out there with cloud and sunshine. And I keep saying to myself, it could be a lot worse this time of year. We could be seeing really big low pressure systems coming in with a lot of wind and rain and temperatures in the low teens. Um, I know some people are a bit annoyed that it's been cloudy. Um, but honestly, these sort of weather conditions are pretty decent um, heading into the first week of September. Um, and although it is a bit gloomy, it's still relative to what we could be doing. It's really not that bad. If we head through to Monday afternoon, uh, you can see temperatures peaking around again, 18, 19, 20 degrees, potentially a little bit cooler for the, for the far, far northeast, potentially only 15, 16 degree, degrees there. We have the wind coming in from the North Sea. As we head through to uh, Tuesday afternoon, you can see temperatures once again, 
around 20 degrees here or there, which is around average to above average for this time of year, remember, uh, we as we are heading into September. So temperatures are going to be rapidly cooling down. If we saw a 20 degree day in the end of October into November, we would be thinking sort of a, a big heat wave. But um, of course, coming off the back of the summer where we want temperatures into the mid 20s or low 20s at least, it does feel a little bit chillier. But it really isn't too bad getting into the high teens, if not low 20s. Heading into Wednesday, you can see temperatures, again, around 20 degrees um, peaking, maybe 17, 18 degrees quite widely. And again, when we see the cloud in the north and northeast, potentially spreading a bit further inland, we do see cooler temperatures around mid-teens and maybe low-teens um, over some hills where it's a little bit cooler for the upper airs. Uh, uh, where it's a little bit cooler with more elevation. So, as you can see by Thursday, things against again, 20 degrees, maybe 21, 22 across the far south coast where we are away from that easterly wind. But again, most areas still mid to high teens, if not low 20s, feeling fairly, fairly pleasant. And as we head through to Friday, as of midday, still, uh, or around by 3 pm, it's still 21 degrees potentially in the south. And once again, widely mid to high teens. And of course, it's dry, so it's still going to be pretty nice out there so make sure to go enjoy yourself out in this weather because as i can say by early next week things are looking going to be looking very interesting where we could be seeing some big thunderstorms some hotter days here or there um, and maybe even that northerly wind as we head towards the middle of september and we're all going to have to keep an eye on it as these as the tropical systems that are rapidly developing at the moment including x hurricane ida um or at the moment category four hurricane ida um it's going to really put a span in the works and it's going to really amplify the jet stream and give it that oomph that could um bring us some sort of quite variable weather and, and a change the big high pressure we've had for the last couple of weeks so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video uh soon